Good night and good morning everyone. This is update for May 8, 2022, day 74 of the war, end of the date update. <clears throat> Today we're going to be very short and just going to do walks through the front line. Tomorrow we'll discuss again more strategic issues. The only, the only item that we're going to mention turns out that the bridge that we were mentioning that connects Ukraine and Romania here near Bilhard Nistrovsky, specifically a small tiny village called uh, Zatoka, is still functioning after being hit for several times with uh, Russian rockets. So that's the only call a strategic update for tonight. Uh, for well, yeah, for tonight. Let's um, we're gonna start as we always do with walks through and in a clockwise fashion. We're gonna start with the Kharkiv stretch of the front line. Things here are pretty much more or less stable as after we discussed, Russian troops withdrew nearly to the border, uh, state border between the two countries, uh, leaving small buffer of depending on the location. Like some some of it is as, as short as two kilometers in some other areas up to eight kilometers, six to eight kilometers. We do think that eventually they will pull back to the Russian territory here. Now let's continue go south. Let's look at the zoom for our front line here. Situation is stable here. There's no different, you know, no no changes since yesterday and since several already probably a week or so uh, or even probably more than that um, so let's look at what's going on here on the Leman bridgehead where the Russian troops are trying to <clears throat> to squeeze out Ukrainian forces the main uh, place where there was uh, intense battle was this village called Dibrova here so as you can see Russian troops are trying to kind of like go and try to um, uh, to cut off Ukrainian defenders here in Leman from the connection to Ukrainian forces here. So basically the axis of attack is to fully capture Dibrova and then hit Stary Karavan and in, in this way cut off Ukrainian troops here and effectively force the withdrawal or uh, create a pocket. So, so far there is intense fighting here, we'll see where it all goes. It's obviously understood by both sides, importance of, you know, of this village or, um, you know, and especially for Ukrainian side. Otherwise, <clears throat> there is no, no changes here on this front line. Now let's look at what's going on here at the, at the tip of Donbass salient, there were quite a bit of uh, developments uh, today and specifically uh, yesterday as well. So let's let's look what's happening here. As we mentioned, Russian side tried to create bridgeheads here on the northern side, and uh, they claim that they succeeded creating bridgehead near village of Bilohorivka. We don't have any confirmation. This is only information from Russian side. So apparently two other locations, they were repelled. So only here they managed to establish. We, we still don't know for sure. This is just Russian side. Here, if we look uh, at the Severodonetsk, uh, looks like this village of Voyevodika is changing hands, has changed hands several times so far. Right now, Russian side is claiming full control of this village. We don't have confirmation, obviously. So that's the situation here. And then uh, if we look, go down south, there is uh, pretty, neg pretty negative development for Ukrainian side. Apparently, and we're going to just look here, apparently Ukrainian side lost town of Popasna. So those claims by Russian side uh, from yesterday turned out to be true. And so we don't know where Ukrainian side established new positions possible that they withdrew quite far and the reason for that is that this road um, from town called Bakhmut this one is the major road that feeds and let's go back here so this is the main road that feeds Ukrainian troops in this whole area so um, this road and this is uh, 
Topasna is right there. So at this point, this road is under artillery fire from the Russian side and quite an active fire. So obviously they understand the importance of this road and they try to make it as difficult as possible for Ukrainian side to supply troops in Severodonetsk, Lysychansk, and basically this whole, some call it like Severodonetsk salient, right? The tip of the Donbass salient. Um, so uh, it's not the only road, but this is the major road. As you can see, there are roads here. So there are, so basically there, there are obviously ways to supply. This is not the only one, but this was the major one. And so now it's under uh, active uh, artillery shelling. So this is a very negative development for Ukrainian side without any doubt. So this creates obviously opportunity for, if you look right now, it's almost, you know, hopefully that's Ukrainian side will prevent it, but it's looks very negative so far because you can see that there is developing kind of like Southern Pincer from Popasna and then potentially pincer from here from the area near Bilogorivka that will probably may or oh, may force withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from Severodonetsk and Lysychansk without much fighting and basically retreating to somewhere to create to basically establishing new front line somewhere here we'll see where it all kind of ends up but so far that's pretty negative development here in this area and kind of major development for for today and yesterday okay let's continue going down south now we're going to look at the situation here straight west of donetsk here russian troops managed to make this uh, call it uh, troitsky salient but there is no there is no new developments here front line so far is stable near novobakhmutivka Otherwise, uh, situation more or less stable across this stretch of front line as well. Let's continue and then let's look at this Saparizia front line. And this is the most important part is, as we always discuss, is this eastern section of the Saparizia front line and specifically area between Huliaipola and Velika Novosilka, where the Russian troops are trying to create southern pincer to cut off the entire Donbass salient to basically connect it with an zoom with the northern pincer here and then cut off this whole salient or force withdrawal of Ukrainian troops. So um, here situation is uh, stable as well. No new developments. Ukrainian side still holds the front line up here in the north. Apparently 128th Brigade and Azoki Regiment are enough to stabilize this front, uh, this section of the front line for now. Um, this this is how it looks uh, sort of the, from the big picture. This is this wedge that was created by Russian side here. So far it's stable, no new developments there. Let's continue, let's look at the Kherson bridgehead and let's see what's going on there. So as you can see the same situation, no changes. Uh, we hearing reports that uh, Russian troops are digging in, basically preparing for potential attacks, uh, which, as we discussed many times, Ukrainian Ukrainian troops are not prepared and not trained for many reasons. They're not capable of executing offenses at this point. So, so right now it looks like the whole front line here is basically stabilizing, and, and both sides are digging in. Uh, in addition, we're also hearing that there, there are attacks of Ukrainian sort of troops and forces on uh, on the island, uh, Zmyini Island. Uh, actually, English translation would be Snakes Island. Uh, it's about in, in this area. And this, this island uh, belongs to Ukraine and it was captured by the Russian by the Russian uh, troops uh, in first couple of days of, uh, at the beginning of the war. And for whatever reason, Ukrainian side believes that this is, this island is somehow of strategic importance, uh, which we disagree. But uh, and there are um, attacks by you know by Ukrainian uh, air force 
and uh, UAVs and apparently even they bring howitzers to actually this area near Zatoka to, uh, to do sh uh, shelling of the island. We really don't understand the logic behind that because uh, Russian uh, Navy anyways blocks Ukrainian ports and they are not usable. So, um, you know, capturing that island or recapturing it will not change anything because Russian Navy still dominates uh, Black Sea and this area of the Black Sea and Ukraine doesn't have ability to change that situation in, in the immediate future. Okay, that's a very short update for uh, for today, for, for yesterday, I guess, at this point. Thanks for watching. Until tomorrow. Bye-bye.